You probably heard a lot of different takes on the pros and cons of going vegan, especially as more and more people have been embracing the plant-based diet. A healthier lifestyle, a more ethical approach to animal welfare, and maybe even a way to save the planet. But unfortunately, not all of what you may be told in favor of or arguing against going vegan is entirely true. So, we as impartial omnivores are here to answer this question of what actually happens to your body when you go vegan. Because believe us, it's a lot more complicated than you think. It should be noted that going vegan much like any diet or other dedicated lifestyle change isn't something that should be undertaken lightly. It's an intensely personal decision and one that's worth investing a fair bit of research into before you commit to it, given the potential impact it can have on your day-to-day -day life. Don't feel pressured to jump to a decision unless you feel confident you've absorbed enough information. Nobody should feel like they need to go vegan just because a friend, family member, or even a random person on the internet told them to, as you're likely to experience in this video's comment section. Sorry about that. Secondly, it's also important to remember that the way in which our bodies react to certain food groups is down to the individual. Each of our bodies have needs that are specific to us and us alone. And while it's essential to consume a balance of all the major food groups where possible, it isn't always a case of one size fits all. The needs of one person's body can be dramatically different from another, owing to a whole range of biological, genetic, and even psychological factors. Some of us can have allergies and sensitivities to certain foods, while others might need more of a specific group of foods in order for their body to function. It's important to take those bodily needs into consideration before we start any kind of diet. As most diets, including going vegan, involve increasing or decreasing our intake of certain food groups. So, with all that in mind, let's delve deeper into what happens to your body when you go vegan. The first thing you might reasonably assume when starting out is that you'll be having severely less protein in your diet, and your body will start to miss it. After all, a lot of meats are extremely high in protein, and a large part of going vegan involves not having any meat or other animal products in your dietary rotation. However, this doesn't necessarily eliminate protein entirely. Doing that would be highly inadvisable for your health. In fact, no protein at all in your diet could lead to serious health complications. A lack of protein can cause someone's muscle mass to decrease significantly, which, as you might imagine, reduces your strength. But this can also make it harder to keep your balance, and even worse, it slows down your metabolism, making it harder to burn calories and leads to more of them being stored as fat in your body. Added to that mix is the possibility of hair loss and dull skin, plus the risk of developing anemia, which causes a lower red blood cell count and thus a lack of oxygen-rich blood to your body, which can make you feel tired and weak. All of this serves to prove that getting adequate protein is important to aid the body's cellular maintenance. It literally helps our bodies survive by strengthening the immune system. But this, of course, begs the question, if someone opts to go vegan and can't eat meat as a result, where does their body get the necessary protein from? Well, luckily, it's not just meat that's rich in protein. In fact, there is a variety of other foods that qualify as vegan, which can provide the body with plenty of protein, without it needing to come from animal products. For one, nuts and seeds are a great source of protein. Pistachios, quinoa, beans, peas, or any products that are soy-based like tofu are great sources of protein for those who go vegan. The idea that cutting out meat from your diet in order to go vegan is harmful is not an unwarranted claim, but it isn't as fatal as some naysayers might have you believe. There are plenty of high-protein alternatives to meat for somebody deciding to go vegan, and these can provide their body with the proteins they need to survive. So while as a vegan, or even if you're not, it's important to keep an eye on your protein intake. As long as you're getting enough, your body shouldn't experience any adverse effects. As with any diet, there's no shortage of noticeable changes that can occur from switching to a vegan diet. However, one possible difference that someone might not be immediately aware of after making the switch is a healthier gut. When it comes to the arduous process of, well, processing food that we eat, our guts are in the front line, taking on the brunt of the work. And it's because of all that hard work that it's important to remember to take care of your gut, even though it's often an easy thing to overlook. After all, unless you're in the midst of a bad stomach ache, you might not tend to pay much thought to your gut. However, going vegan can have benefits to the overall health of your gut. You see, within the gut is what's known as the gut microbiome. This is a collection of bacteria, fungi, and viruses that live within your intestines the organ responsible for part of the digestive process. Now, don't panic. We know hearing you have bacteria and fungi in your body might sound alarming at first. There are actually trillions of those microbes that live in your intestines and even on your skin. But again, don't panic. 
It's not a sign of illness. As a matter of fact, it's the total opposite. While it's true that a lot of bacteria can cause disease, there are plenty that are extremely important for helping maintain your bodily health, contributing to your immune system and digestion, like the ones that form the gut microbiome. With all that worry cleared up, back to the positive impact that going vegan can have on your gut. Specifically, switching to a vegan diet can improve the health of your gut microbiome, and that, in turn, can work wonders for the rest of your body. One study examined the effects of vegetarian and vegan diets on gut microbiomes and found that keeping to a vegan diet means the ecosystem within the gut remains diverse. A lot of those helpful microbes we mentioned before can be introduced into the gut microbiome through a more plant-based diet, bringing in beneficial bacteria that can support the gut and that, in turn, can improve your overall health. The gut microbiome plays a huge part in controlling how we digest our food. It keeps our immune system functioning as well as aiding in plenty of other bodily processes. So keeping that filled with beneficial bacteria is definitely a compelling reason for going vegan, given the potential benefits. Of course, it's important to re-emphasize that all of our bodily needs vary from person to person. Current research in the topic has shown that going vegan can promote a diverse ecosystem within the gut microbiome, and this can lead to health outcomes such as improved digestion. But that's not to say everyone with a strict plant-only diet will experience the same benefits. A number of people across the world will pursue different diet options with the express intention of losing weight. Now, firstly, it's important that we remember how much of an intensely personal decision this is. After all, many people are comfortable in their body weight and should be allowed to feel that comfort. Meanwhile, others might find that they need to lose weight for medical reasons and that may put their health at risk if unaddressed. Being vegan puts more emphasis on having a cleaner way of eating, removing meat and animal products for both potential health benefits, but often to remain socially and ethically conscious of how these products are created. However, while losing weight isn't the goal of veganism necessarily, someone who's made the decision to turn to eating vegan might find themselves dropping a few pounds as a result. This is arguably less a direct effect of veganism on the body and is instead the removal of the effect of other foods. Eating red meat or any foods that are processed has long been linked with an increase in weight. This doesn't happen overnight, of course, but gradually over the course of a number of years, someone with a high amount of these foods in their diet without the proper exercise might see themselves slowly gaining weight. Weight loss as a result of a vegan diet, including more food that's less calorie dense than the food present in an omnivore diet. Vegetables and fruits are often a lot less calorie dense than meat, meaning that consuming the same quantity of food in a vegan diet will lead to less calories being consumed. As you might have already figured out, since veganism stresses not eating meat or most processed foods, this possible byproduct of eating said foods is no longer present, and there are other health benefits associated with this aspect of the diet too. Since there's also a link present between red meat and processed meat and an increased risk of diabetes, heart disease, and even colon cancer. So by removing meat from their diet, a person's body is likely to gain slightly less weight and as a result potentially avoid these health risks. It's also worth noting the fact that while weight loss isn't usually the intention of going vegan, a significant drop in one's weight can be as potentially dangerous as a gradual increase. In extreme cases, losing too much weight can deprive your body of the nutrients it requires in order to perform various functions. This is why, even if a person is vegan, the idea of a balanced diet is so important. Food is one of the ways in which our bodies get their intakes of vitamins and minerals, and losing a dangerous amount of weight can cause deficiencies in these. Given how essential they are for your body to properly do all the things it needs to do, a lack of certain nutrients can weaken your immune system and make it harder for your body to repair injuries and run the risk of causing more severe health conditions. As with any diet, it's important for someone who is vegan to pay close attention to the weight they might be losing as a result of purely plant-based eating. While not without its risks, just like any significant bodily change, the potential for weight reduction is only one of the many possible outcomes that someone can experience from going vegan, with another being a potential improvement to the person's heart. Now, by this, we don't mean that a person who is vegan automatically starts feeling more love or affection, or even that they're inherently more emotional than anyone who isn't. Though, you may meet a few vegans with all hemp outfits that insist otherwise. We're talking about the actual health of the heart itself, the organ responsible for pumping blood around the body. As we mentioned previously, the removal of meat and other processed animal products from someone's diet can be great for weight loss. But some of these foods are also high in cholesterol. That's a waxy, fat-like substance you'll find in all the cells within your body that carries certain proteins throughout your bloodstream. Red meat is a big offender in this category, along with a lot of full-fat dairy products. Think milk, cream, and of course, cheese. 
Ever felt kind of queasy after too much mozzarella? It happens, believe us, and the results are not pretty. If your level of cholesterol is too high, then that comes with its own boatload of possible issues, perhaps the most dangerous being heart disease. This can refer to a few different types of conditions that affect the heart, but one of the most serious is coronary heart disease. If fatty substances are allowed to build up within the blood vessels that travel to the heart, then it can lead to these vessels getting narrower or worse blocked. This can, in a lot of cases, cause heart attacks, which we probably don't even need to tell you can often be fatal. Somebody who has removed meat and processed foods from their diet is less likely to develop a level of cholesterol that might put them at a greater risk of coronary heart disease. In fact, removing these aforementioned products and introducing more plant-based foods in their place can actually improve the general health of the heart. Whole grains and nuts are all rich in vitamins and minerals, as well as fiber, which is useful for the body to carry out its essential functions. Now, another important reminder. Simply removing one specific type of food from your regular diet isn't an instant cure-all for potential issues. On top of that, there is such a thing as good cholesterol, so having the goal of intaking as little cholesterol as possible or even wanting to be as extreme as having none whatsoever can also be problematic. The body produces its own cholesterol in order to internally manufacture hormones, vitamin D, and other substances that aid with digestion, so none of us can ever truly have zero cholesterol. High-density lipoprotein cholesterol, however, is what's commonly referred to as good cholesterol. It can absorb excess cholesterol in the blood and carry it toward a person's liver. There it can be flushed out and expelled from the body, meaning that higher levels of HDL cholesterol can reduce the risks of conditions like heart disease. Low-density lipoprotein cholesterol is the type that collects in the walls of your blood cells. The reason it's important to be aware of the difference is that it's still possible to have high levels of LDL cholesterol even if someone is eating a vegan diet. Just because something is vegan doesn't make it inherently healthy. As with any foods, vegan foods that are high in LDL can be consumed in a way that is unhealthy. For example, any foods that are high in refined grains. Think about your pasta, white rice, or any drinks with a high sugar content. They can also introduce more LDL cholesterol into your system and leave you at risk of heart disease. Although a vegan diet can potentially reduce the risk of a person developing heart disease and improve the overall health of their heart, that isn't to say it's a guarantee, nor does it mean that vegans are immune to the dangers of having too high a level of LDL cholesterol. It often comes down to the vegan options an individual chooses to consume. Those are what determines the level of specific types of cholesterol and thus either reduces or increases the potential for heart disease. As with their calorie intake, the weight that they might have gained or lost, and any other factor relating to any other diet, cholesterol intake is something a person going vegan should ideally monitor, just to be on the safe side, as should we all. A reduced risk of heart disease is far from the only change the body can undergo as a result of a vegan diet. As a matter of fact, the body's likely to change in response to any diet. It's important to remember that not all of these changes are always visible or can be felt, and not all of them are always good changes either. Sometimes, although this one again varies person to person, somebody going vegan can experience a loss in their bone mass. Just as there are those that benefit the body in other ways, like aiding digestion or growth, there are specific nutrients that improve the strength and density of human bones. And unfortunately for anybody that's gone vegan, these particular nutrients are found in animal products. Dairy, while it can be filled with high levels of cholesterol, can also be an excellent source of calcium, which the body can use to maintain the strength of one's bones. Many of the body's muscles, including those within the heart, also rely on calcium. Studies even suggest that calcium and vitamin D can assist in protecting the body against cancer, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Then there's vitamin B12, important for maintaining the mineral density of a person's bones. B12 can often be found in eggs, beef, and salmon. And as you've most likely realized, all of those are animal products, and that means they're off the menu for anyone who wants to stick to being vegan. Having reduced levels of these bone-benefiting nutrients can sometimes cause anyone who's strictly vegan to have a lower bone density. While this might not be apparent right away, since none of us can see our own bones without the use of an x-ray machine, low bone density can lead to a condition known as osteoporosis. Since our bones are living tissue, they're constantly being broken down and replaced with new bone. Osteoporosis occurs when the creation of this new bone slows down, and you can't keep up with the old bone being broken down. It causes a person's bones to weaken and makes them brittle, to the point where they can break a lot easier. In some cases, just bending over or coughing can fracture someone's bones if they have the disorder. Now, you might think this is a death sentence for the bones of anyone going vegan. After all, if you can't get the necessary nutrients to keep your bones healthy, you surely must be doomed to develop osteoporosis. While a lot of the things beneficial to bones are found in animal products, there are other alternative sources. 
For example, we mentioned calcium, which is commonly found in dairy products, but a lot of soy products on the market are also rich in calcium, along with almonds and both white and black beans. Just like being aware of what alternative source they're getting their protein from, someone going vegan will want to consider how they're getting their other vital nutrients into their diet in order to avoid complications like osteoporosis. There are plenty of other bodily changes that can occur as a result of going vegan. For one, someone might experience an unpleasant change in their skin. Some dermatologists have linked veganism with skin breakouts, when the hair follicles of the face get clogged with dead skin cells and excess oil, causing the formation of acne. This can occur as a result of a vegan person switching their sources of protein from meat to more plant-based options. Certain soy products are known to contain phytoestrogens, which are a compound found in plants that can affect the body's normal levels of hormones, and this in turn can trigger breakouts of acne. Although as undesirable as it might sound, continuing on a vegan diet does not mean that these breakouts persist indefinitely and can often even clear up on their own. There is another change that if you are vegan or have ever lived with one, you may have been holding your breath for us to bring up, the touchy and admittedly stinky subject of vegan farts. This is technically a sequel to our point about the diverse gut biome, often caused by a plant-based diet, but anyone who eats purely plants will also be taking an absolute truckload of fiber, which also promotes good digestive health. The excess gut bacteria also results in the stomach and intestines producing excess gas, which leads to some truly noxious flatulence. A new vegan might find this bodily change embarrassing or even worrying, but your body will adjust to the change over time. To alleviate symptoms in the meantime, you'll want to stay hydrated and cook gas-inducing foods like cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower rather than eating them raw. Taking probiotic supplements on the side probably won't hurt either. While it can cause a number of bodily changes, adopting a vegan diet isn't inherently a bad thing. As with any diet, the key to maintaining the necessary things your body needs to function is to practice good planning and awareness of what you're eating. This might not prevent any and all changes that being vegan can incur, but keeping track of what foods you're getting what nutrients from can prove useful in indicating what might be affecting the body. Now watch what does it actually feel like to be shot, or watch this video instead.